Today we take a closer look at how traffic behaves in City Skylines 2, how it differs from CS1, what I like, dislike about it, and what you can do to influence its behavior. Basically, what are the tools available? Luckily, I have this industrial zone in my city of 115,000 people, where traffic is very heavy and practically collapsing during rush hours. So let's try to fix it to properly test everything in practice. This is the industrial zone as a whole. I built it mostly just to make it look nice, to be honest, although it does make sense in some regards. It has the main central avenue with plenty of space for roundabouts on each intersection. It has four main entrances, one here from the downtown, this one from another big city part, down here from the cargo harbor and some medium density districts, and the last one a direct exit from a highway. Right now there is also a single bus line that just delivers people from bigger city districts. A cargo train station is right here, roughly around the center, just to bring in more cargo and take some pressure off the entrance. But overall, it's not really working very well, especially during those rush hours. So let's see why. One reason traffic collapses in the industrial zone during rush hours is the collapse of traffic in the rest of the city, basically. So it just creates traffic jams on the roads going to and from the industrial zone, which obviously just blocks the intersections inside the industrial zone as well and just worsens traffic, kind of like a domino effect. But uh, it's just beyond the scope of this one little video to fix traffic in the entire city. So let's only focus on the industrial zone. In the industrial zone, I mostly have roundabouts, and this is a great opportunity to already take a look at roundabouts and just examine how they are working. These are of course the one-click roundabouts that you are just going to select in the road window and just uh, plop down on the existing intersections. They are not the City Skylines 1 roundabouts where you actually have to build the circle. These in City Skylines 2, they seem to have, as you can see over here, they seem to have like yielding principles applied already so that the cars or motorcycles that are entering the roundabout, they are actually yielding to the traffic that's currently on the circle. Although it has some flaws and some sort of limitations. I'm gonna be showing you the game behavior mostly paused because I really need to snipe that perfect moment when the vehicles are just aligned perfectly for that explanation. So anyway, uh, the cars that are entering the roundabout, they are not in the circle just yet. So for example, this car and this truck, those are actually yielding rather well. They are really going to wait for the cars that are currently on the circle in that outermost lane. So this truck right now. I'm gonna unpause and you will see that maybe if there are some other vehicles doing that. No, obviously now that I need it, there are not gonna be any cars uh, actually going there, but uh, that's fine, now I need to, oh yeah, this is actually a very good example as well. This is actually quite common because cars are yielding to vehicles leaving the roundabout. So as you can see from these arrows, uh, this road has uh, both lanes for going straight across the roundabout as well. But obviously in here, we only have this single innermost lane for like circling around. So for example, from this road, if cars wants to turn, want to turn left, they have to use the innermost lane. They are just going to go on it around and just before the exit, just like this truck is doing that, uh, it's going to cross that outermost lane. And this car right here is yielding to that truck. So it entered the roundabout, but it's now yielding to this exiting truck. So this can actually cause some traffic issues. It's not that big of a deal in here because there are these two lanes, but let me see if I can find a situation where it might be a problem. This is actually a good example of the situation. So we have this road over here, which has both lanes going left, then this road, which has both lanes going straight, and then on the output, we have two lanes that they can obviously use to leave the roundabout. So uh, it created this situation. We have this green sedan over here that entered from this road and it just wants to go across the roundabout. It wants to turn left. So it's using the outermost lane because it can, as you can see by the arrow. But like I said before, it's yielding to the traffic exiting the roundabout. So that's this white car over here. But this red car over here, it also entered already, it was already on the roundabout, but it was using the outermost lane and it wanted to exit here just like the white car. 
but it cannot because it's being blocked by the green car. If there's like a traffic jam over here, or if there are like a lot of people crossing the crosswalk, for example, then these cars are just gonna take forever to leave the roundabout, which means that these ones are not gonna continue across it, which means that these ones are gonna be stuck behind them. So that actually happens quite a lot. But anyway, that's the yielding situation for roundabouts. Just like in CS1, you could of course build your own roundabout in CS2, just build a circle and build some kind of roads going from it. But uh, just like in vanilla CS1, this is not going to work because uh, there is no automatic yielding on the entrances, so that's just not gonna be there at all. Plus vehicles in CS2, just like in vanilla CS1, they do not enter blocked junctions. So these kinds of intersections, these kinds of entrance points, exit points, they are not really gonna work very well. So custom roundabouts like these, not a good thing in CS2. If you then want to build a more complicated roundabout, then the game is automatically going to assign the lanes. So you cannot control that whatsoever. So for example, right here, if I just use the, the biggest road, then I only have a single lane turning right, single lane turning left, and all four lanes are allowed to go straight. So I cannot really choose that. The only way to control that is to really fiddle with all kinds of different lane configurations. And uh, sometimes you might get the desired results, but uh, more often than not, it's just kind of guesswork how it actually applies the lanes, what are the rules and what you can do. So in some cases, this actually makes sense because obviously it's only going to do two lanes to go straight because I only have two lanes on the output over here, but uh, why is it only giving me one lane to turn right? And why is it actually giving me two lanes to turn left when there is only a single lane on the exit there on the left? So these are the kind of things that you cannot influence uh, like manually. You only do that automatically when you build those roads. So this kind of customization is just not there in City Skylines 2 right now. And this leads me back to my industrial zone because I have certain intersections where I would really like to have um, beefier, for example, right turns. On this particular intersection, I would really like to because this is the one of the main avenues leading into the industrial zone. And the main direction is basically that way. So turning right. But no matter what I do, no matter how I change this road, there's always going to be a single lane turning right. So I wanted to do something different. So let's now jump into the time lapse and let's just see how I changed this entire place. And together with that, I'm just going to mention more traffic behavior characteristics and we're going to take a look at some uh, different situations as well. And in the end, I'm just going to look at the entire industrial zone, what I did with it and I'm just gonna talk about the rest, all right? So let's go. So the first thing that I tried to do was to just naively increase the number of lanes over here because it kind of worked in the rest of the city just to increase the number of the various turning lanes. But like I explained before, that's not exactly a good strategy for the roundabouts because uh, some of the turning lanes are just going to remain. It's really only going to increase the number of the lanes going straight. But at this point, I did not really know that. So this is what I tried. Uh, unfortunately, it also increases the size of the roundabouts, the radius of the roundabout, and I did not have the space over here for that. So I actually had to rework the entire industrial zone. I had to just push all the factories and the incinerator and the train station. I just had to push it one or two cells further away from this central corridor. So as you can see right there, yeah, I could build the road in the corridor, but uh, the roundabout would then not fit. Uh, later, I'm actually going to get rid of the roundabouts, so this step, the rework of the zone was actually not necessary, but uh, yeah, I just did not know that at this point. Uh, the time lapse I was recording before the new patch, before the waste management was kind of improved in the latest patch, so I just wanted to build another incinerator over here just to take care of the garbage, but... Uh, uh, during this patch, it was still not enough. It was just still kind of broken. In this new patch, the incinerators now have so much more capacity, so much more processing power, and they are also spawning a lot more garbage trucks, which is creating its own issues in the industrial zone. So maybe I'm actually going to get rid of that uh, second incinerator there. But anyway, now I wanted to rebuild this roundabout interchange because I just wanted to have it nicer looking. I wanted to have the straight direction go into a tunnel because I will need that anyway further up this highway. But I also wanted to have the circle open for something. 
And I figured it might be a good idea to place some kind of uh, big parking lots, big parking garages on the edges of the city, especially on the edges of the industrial zone, because City Skylines 2 actually simulates uh, people arriving into the city to work there if they don't live there. So people arriving from some kind of distant suburbs or different cities, yeah, that kind of simulation. That's actually pretty nice, but if you don't have intercity buses, trains, and these kinds of public transport options, that's actually quite a lot of traffic that's uh, on your roads every morning and every evening. So I thought that uh, I might just help that, might help it with uh, building some, some of these parking lots on the edges, and then maybe create like a shuttle bus. That's exactly why I built this. Uh, like a sunken road right there, because it's supposed to go into the circle. It's not going to connect to the highways, but it's going to connect uh, to some kind of pedestrian system around the, um, the parking garage. I'm not going to build that today because I did not even have the parking garages uh, unlocked with the milestones right now. But that's basically the idea. I'm obviously, of course, uh, going to try to do some kind of, uh, or I would like to try some kind of uh, intercity connections. Now, anyway, this is the trick that I learned from Hitsu on Discord. Thank you so much, Hitsu. Uh, this is uh, basically increasing the size of intersections, uh, just like if you had node controller. But I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that with some bigger intersections. You will see that principle applied uh, in more detail. While I was building the roundabout interchange, I noticed that there was the flashing symbol for a traffic jam over here. So I went to investigate. There's absolutely no reason for a traffic jam because the roundabout up there is flowing nicely. But the uh, traffic jam is just happening because of the lane switching over there. So as you can see, in City Skylines 2, this is not very good. There's basically no point in doing these kinds of dedicated uh, turning lanes because cars are just going to switch randomly anyway. And uh, the switching is, is just bad. You can see it for the trucks, especially. Sometimes they are just going to do a full stop, even on the highway. They're going to just turn 90 degrees almost to that neighboring lane. They cannot really turn very well, so they are going to reverse a little. And it's just slowing down traffic so, so much. Plus, the traffic just has uh, the behavior set so that they are constantly trying to fit into an empty lane. So in this particular situation, this is actually pretty stupid because uh, they want to all turn left to that uh, leaving lane, the turning lane, but sometimes they are just going to go all the way right because, well, yeah, there is an empty lane. Let's go, let's go there quickly. But then they realize, oh, wait, I want to turn left. So they are just in that same position, gonna immediately turn back. And uh, that's just slowing down traffic so much. And this is like the number one problem that's uh, unfortunately causing traffic issues in CS2 right now. So the dynamic lane switching really needs to be turned down a lot. Then I went back into the industrial zone to build my own custom roundabouts there. I just really wanted to have more control over the number of lanes, especially on the entrances, but uh, also inside the roundabout, inside the circle itself. So I just built it using highways because I also wanted to get rid of uh, crosswalks there, more on that later, but uh, it just doesn't work. These kinds of custom roundabouts, complicated custom roundabouts just don't work. Custom roundabouts only work just like in CS1 if you have only a single lane on the circle or at most two lanes. So there is kind of like a bypass for the neighboring right turn, but otherwise uh, they don't work very well. On these customized ones, there is no yielding whatsoever on the entrances. Plus there is that violent lane merging, just like on the highways, like we've seen before. And you cannot really control the number of lanes anyway, because the tools are just not there in vanilla CS2. So right now, only the one click roundabouts make sense in CS2. The custom ones kind of don't. But these standard looking roundabouts not working for medium to heavy traffic, that's not the fault of City Skylines 2's AI traffic, because that's realistic roundabouts. The standard roundabouts really are not working for heavy traffic, even in real life. You would have to build some kind of a turbo roundabout, Dutch-style turbo roundabout, but there you would have to very carefully build all the lanes. You would need to have full control over where cars go, where they yield, where they turn, but those kinds of tools are just not available in CS2, which means that in CS2, if you want to have high amounts of cars going through an intersection, it must not be a roundabout. Ideally, it would be an interchange, obviously, but creating an interchange on every single intersection, you just don't have the space for that. So 
The second best solution, I mean, far below an interchange, is some kind of like a big brute force American style intersection with so many different turning lanes, dedicated turning lanes, and customized traffic light phases. But that's just something that we cannot build in CS2 either. But I kind of tried anyway, so that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm trying to apply that uh, trick for making the intersection wider, basically just as if I was using node controller in CS1. So once again, thank you Hitu for showing me this trick on Discord. You're going to do it by basically just uh, turning off snapping once you are coming towards that intersection. And as you can see, at the moment where it's going to snap to it, it's kind of going to spill the model of the road to the intersection. You're just going to build it right there. And it's going to create these wide turns, which is obviously going to help traffic turn faster, especially on those right turns. Now, what is the number one reason for traffic collapse in city skylines? It's obviously pedestrians. If you have crosswalks on intersections, they are going to slow down traffic so, so much. Especially for the left turns, because uh, it's going to limit the number of cars that can actually go and turn left inside that uh, phase, uh, traffic light phase window. So if you want to have a high capacity intersection, you have to build overpasses or underpasses. So that's exactly what I started doing over here. It's obviously not going to make the entire area look that great anymore, but uh, hey, it's kind of working. Then I just gave up on all roundabouts in this area, just turned them into the classic intersections using exactly the same trick and uh, just kind of brute forcing it with as many lanes as I can fit here, especially to have those turning lanes because that's very much needed in this entire district. All this increase in lane numbers also required some reworks of, for example, the railway that's going perpendicular to the industrial zone, the one that connects the industrial and a passenger line and uh, then I was just doing some you know, polishing of the pedestrian skyway and some kind of bus stops and these kinds of things but let's now jump into the live game into like a recap and then I'm going to mention some other traffic behavior that I noticed during all of this and I'm gonna try to uh, show you exactly what it all means. Okay, so this is the result so let me just share some findings for the traffic behavior. So let's start with the traffic light phasing. Uh, it's bad. There is not much else to say about it. Uh, you cannot control it whatsoever. There are no timed traffic lights and it doesn't seem to take into consideration the actual traffic situation, uh, just like in CS1 vanilla, really. And uh, there are, for example, no protected turns, left turns, right turns. Even though the game kind of tries to be American, it doesn't allow the right turn on a red light. So you actually have to wait for that, for those kinds of phases. So overall, it's not particularly good. It's only for going straight really where it works, but especially the left turns are just pretty bad. So that's why on this intersection, I had to do this uh, bypass, basically turn this into an interchange. So there is this uh, left turn here that goes into the tunnel. It then just continues underground and exits just in front of this roundabout. So that helps a lot. And uh, with the limited uh, tools that we have in the road services, you can, of course, get rid of this left turn from this intersection, which is also going to influence the markings inside the intersection. So that's pretty nice. But otherwise, micromanaging these kinds of intersections is impossible right now. The only tool that you have are those uh, arrow bands, but you can only do it globally for the entire segment. So that's only useful in some specific cases, but you cannot really do it lane based. You cannot choose your own uh, lights, traffic lights. If you get rid of traffic lights, the entire intersection is just going to turn into a chaos and there's going to be a whole bunch of despawning there and it's just going to collapse anyway. So the traffic lights right now are the best solution, but uh, it's pretty bad solution at the same time. So I think we will just have to wait for more polish in this way, but I kind of doubt that we're going to get it. So we're just going to have to wait for mods. That's it. There is traffic despawning and it works in two different ways. So it works just like in CS1, where if you have like a big traffic jam, then cars are eventually going to despawn if they are waiting for a very long time. But they are also going to despawn. I'm not really sure if I'm going to catch it here, but they're also going to despawn if they are going to enter some kind of a gridlock situation. And what's worse is that actually even buses and trams despawn if that situation happens. So 
It actually happens quite a lot in this particular industrial zone. Uh, I don't even have any buses over here. Maybe that's the, that's the reason why I don't have them over here right now. So they are going to enter the industrial zone. They are going to enter that uh, gridlock situation in the intersection, which you really cannot prevent. And uh, they're just going to disappear. So a new bus will have to enter the line and it will just have to go from the start of the line so basically buses are never going to reach the end of the line and they are never going to return as well. So that's that's pretty bad, especially because of uh, just completely ruining the public transport uh, situation. Yeah, and look at that. This is exactly the situation I was mentioning before. So this motorcycle is yielding to this semi truck over here, but it's blocking this truck and uh, these cars are blocking these cars. Let's actually see if they're going to despawn. Yeah, there we go. Now we have the despawning already happening because uh, this situation would otherwise be impossible to solve. But uh, perhaps uh, maybe the situation should not have happened even in the first place. Also, you could have seen that violent lane merging over there just before entering the intersection for no reason whatsoever, because both of those cars that were doing that, they just wanted to go straight and both lanes allowed it. But for some reason, Pathfinding decided that one lane is greener than the other. So yeah, there we go. It seems that lane switching in CS2 is done outside of nodes. It is possible to do it on just normal segments, unlike in CS1, where it was only possible on nodes. But here, cars are just doing that uh, just outside of nodes entirely. So for example, this truck over here is trying to switch lanes. Unfortunately, it does it going almost 90 degrees to that, uh, to that lanes but unfortunately they are still not doing it very smoothly. The simulation also doesn't seem to take into consideration the actual like size and capacity of a road. Or if it does, it's not exactly all that a priority when cars decide where they want to go. So for example, I have a really busy, well, this street right here, because cars seem to use it from this intersection going down here and then just going all the way here, bypassing that main avenue into this intersection. So they are just completely bypassing this intersection and this intersection, even though right now there is actually not much traffic on it. The exact same thing happens around the incinerator. Cars seem to just for some reason favor turning right over here, up here, then going around the intersection, or sorry, around the incinerator, going here into this intersection, just completely disregarding this segment of the road. I really don't know why. Sometimes during a rush hour, yeah, this road can be quite, uh, quite uh, jammed, but not really. It's just like heavy, but not completely clogged. But cars are still bypassing it around the incinerator. Turning restrictions and for example, pedestrian roads, as you can see, doesn't work. Cars are still going to use them, even though there is no actual arrow here for turning right. But uh, it's not like there isn't a possibility to go there into this entire district, but uh, they just find it shorter, so cars use that pedestrian road anyway. Removing crosswalks or, for example, banning certain turns is not really working all that well. Sometimes uh, people are still going to use the crosswalk there, even if it's not there anymore. In here I have these overpasses, so people are mostly using those. But uh, when I didn't have them, people just didn't care and crossed the street anyway. And by the way, when I'm recording this, it's already after the previous patch, which fixed the garbage management, but uh, it kind of went from one extreme to the other. So for example, look at that, 250 available vehicles in this industrial waste processing site. Uh, it actually created some interesting traffic situation over here because there was a line of garbage trucks only. And uh, even the incinerator now has uh, really high storage capacity, really high processing speed as well. So. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if this is the balance that's required. By the way, also what's interesting is that all of these different roads through buildings, so for example, through this cargo station, they are actually considered to be a road by the pathfinding. And uh, it's just bizarre because if there is like a slightly heavier traffic on this segment of the road, cars are just going to bypass it on this road through the cargo train terminal. And uh, once again, kind of showcasing how the pathfinding doesn't really take into consideration the, the size of the possible detour. Speaking of detours, I have no idea what this yellow bus is doing over here because its line is inside the industrial zone. It's supposed to be going through this main avenue from this residential area. 
no idea what it's doing over here. But this is also happening quite commonly because buses sometimes just uh, they don't want to use the path where they should be going, but uh, they think that maybe there's like a traffic jam or something, even if there isn't, and they're just gonna go somewhere somewhere completely else, like they end up on the highway. No idea how. It just seems that the traffic simulation in CS2 just heavily overcalculates the possible detours, the empty lanes, and these kinds of things. The traffic just has zero patience for waiting in some kind of a traffic jam, so they are constantly trying to switch lanes, even though they are actually causing the traffic problems by doing this. So, in my opinion, this just needs to be toned down quite a lot. Yeah, sure, a lot of these traffic behavior situations you can attribute to the reckless behavior because it might be realistic, you know, there is always that BMW driver who cuts across three lanes on highways and these kinds of things. Uh, yeah, you can argue that, but then again, there are just so many vehicles doing that in CS2, so that argument is just not exactly accurate there. On one hand, yeah, sure, if a couple of cars did that, fine, but there's just too many cars doing that. Now, in that review video, I mentioned that it's actually impossible to do multi-line stops for buses on a single segment, but I was not exactly right with that one, although the behavior is kind of inconsistent, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right now in this uh, place, I have uh, this bus shelter for the blue line, this bus shelter for the yellow line. So what happens if there already is a bus waiting at the yellow stop, yellow bus waiting at the yellow stop, and a blue bus wants to go here? Sometimes it bypasses the yellow bus waiting there, so it's going to go into the bus bay around here. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just goes into the bus bay over here at the start of it and waits for the yellow bus to go away. They are constantly though, uh, very constantly, going from the bus bay at the station. So if, for example, there was a blue bus over here and the yellow bus just uh, arrived after it, it would go into the normal lanes and just bypass the, the, the blue one at the bus bay. But the entrance behavior is kind of inconsistent sometimes. Also, a little note for bus behavior. If there are no people waiting at the stop and no people want to get off the bus, the bus is just going to bypass the stop entirely. Which, on the other hand, is unfortunately messing up the unbunching. So those were mostly the negatives, but uh, there are actually a plenty of positives as well. I overall just like uh, the movement of cars in CS2 a lot more compared to CS1. It's way less cartoony, even though some vehicles still do the violent wobbling at tight turns, but it's definitely toned down quite a lot. Uh, there are no pocket cars in CS2. That's huge, so cars are just not randomly spawning on sidewalks or on pedestrian roads or pedestrian paths even, just like in CS1. So this has huge potential then for some like detailed cities. But overall the traffic behavior in CS2, it just needs a lot of polishing. It just needs a lot more fine tuning it seems. Uh, perhaps it needs a lot of mods to really just unlock more features, more micromanaging options and these kinds of things. Right now it's not in City Skylines 2 and it's unfortunately quite frustrating to just do these kinds of traffic solutions, apply some real life principles because uh, first of all you cannot because the tools are just not going to allow it and uh, the traffic behavior is just uh, not particularly realistic in some regards. It's definitely an improvement over vanilla CS1, no doubt about that, but it just needs to go further for it to be like a proper enjoyable experience to deal with traffic. And I really hope we are going to reach that point because I was going into this episode just 100% convinced that I'm going to have a good time just fixing traffic. But the restrictions and the lack of tools are unfortunately a bit too much for me. So this kind of leads me to the point that I wanted to make as well, and that is I'm just not going to play City Skylines 2 anymore. I think I've seen enough from the vanilla game. I have tried all these different things and uh, the game just doesn't really have many things to offer me right now. I tried all the different service buildings, the traffic fixing, I tried building the interchanges and there's not much left right now. And I was even doing some reading about performance with very high numbers of populations. And apparently, even for like really high-end hardware, the game is just going to slow down, the simulation is going to slow down a lot, around quarter million population. Right now, the city is not even that large. I would really like to have it at least 
like triple the size but uh, I'm just not gonna be able to with my hardware especially because you know my CPU is ancient but uh, I just don't really have the motivation to upgrade right now because of just vanilla CS2 right so you know, after we get some mods or after we get some polished features of the game, I'm definitely going to return as fast as possible to CS2 building, like proper building of the city, because I really want to have this kind of management experience right now, but uh, I just don't, okay? So yeah, that's the explanation. Uh, I might still do some City Scans 2 related videos, but definitely not for just building kind of like a Let's Play style, yeah? I'm going to abandon that. Actually, a little note about the simulation now that I mentioned it, I'm not really sure if the simulation is actually working properly in CS2, because I remember that in CS1, when you had uh, traffic jams, traffic problems, uh, the city basically collapsed because uh, businesses did not get resupplied, uh, industry did not get raw materials, and so on and so on. I did not have anything like that, and I had constant traffic issues in this place, I have constant despawning of resupply trucks, but none of the industrial buildings ever complained about lack of materials. None of the businesses ever complained about lack of resupplies. So yeah, I, I really hope I'm wrong with this one, but uh, I smell some kind of uh, not exactly working, uh, working resupply chains in here. I was doing some reading again about that. Apparently it's a thing, but uh, I would just have to do some more testing. And when it comes to the visual side of things, I'm just not really satisfied with the city at all. Uh, I just picked this map because I really like to have uh, more hilly maps. I just don't want to build on a flat ground in CS1 as well. But uh, this means that I would really like to do these kinds of low angle shots. But uh, I'm sorry, but the mountains in CS2 just look horrible. Uh, it just looks like pile of dirt and uh, the very strict snow line on them, it's just not particularly good. So these kinds of low angle shots, I'm really not a big fan of at all. So all that's left is basically these kinds of views and uh, they, just get, they just get very old very fast in CS2 because uh, everyone is basically doing them exactly the same. So, so yeah, even visually, I have just no interest in continuing vanilla CS2 right now. Plus, there are still a ton of other issues. So, for example, there is still the money bug. Money is still going up despite me being in the red and uh, many, many other things. So, yeah, like I said already a billion times before, I'm just going to take a break from CS2 gameplay and I'm going to return to it uh, later, hopefully with some kind of mods that are just going to expand the entire experience. I'm very much looking forward to that. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching it. If you find it uh, helpful, if you liked it, uh, even, you know, even if you didn't like the game, for example, or the problems that I've shown, then please consider clicking the thumbs up below the video, writing some kind of funny comment, share the video if you think someone else might like it. And huge thanks to the channel members who decided to directly support this channel and what I do here. So I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Goodbye.